In this video, I'm gonna showcase and explain how we render within Claw 3D. And I'm also gonna go through all of the different settings and show you which ones are the best ones to pick in order to get the most realistic final result. Now in the industry, the Claw 3D render engine is typically considered not to be that great in comparison to other 3D softwares. However, with the right setup and with the right settings, you can actually get some really nice images uh, created within the software. Now, when you're new to a software like Claw 3D, the last thing that you want to do is to also be simultaneously learning another software just to render in, such as Blender. Now, when you're just starting out, it's more than acceptable to render your images and video within Claw 3D. However, when you do get a bit more advanced, I would recommend moving on to different softwares such as Blender or Unreal Engine to get an even better result. However, even now there is times where I choose to render images within the program rather than moving to an external program. And rendering within this software is very easy and I'm gonna showcase that to you now. So for those who haven't fully understood what rendering actually is, it's essentially taking the 3D window and creating an extremely high quality image or video from it. So the preview that you're seeing over in the 3D window is not actually the final result. So this is a much lesser quality preview of the final image that we're gonna get through rendering. So rendering is only applicable right at the very end. So once everything is completed and finalized, we would then go into create a render. So as you can see on the screen, I've got my finished product. I've got an avatar, a female avatar with an outfit on that I want to render. So to begin the render process, we come up to the top menu up here and we press render and we then press render again. And now our 2D window has been replaced with this rendering window. Now all of these tools on the side, these are all of our render tools. So I'm quickly gonna explain through each one now what they are. So this top button is called the interactive render. So essentially what this is, it's a live update and preview of what the render is gonna look like. So it essentially takes the 3D window and it applies the render settings to that and shows us in real time what it's gonna look like after it's been rendered. This, the next button down is called the final render. So once we're happy with how our interactive render looks, we would then press the final render to create that image. And we then have the stop render button in case we've forgotten anything or in case we don't wanna go through with the render, we can stop it prematurely. Now the next three buttons, these are all about the final image. So for example, we could copy the current image, we can save the current image, or we can show where the image is gonna be saved in a folder. So this uh, save current image and copy current image. Now, if you're halfway through a render and you just wanna quickly screen grab what you can see on the screen, you can use these buttons to do so. And the next four buttons down, these are all of our settings. These are all of the things that we can change to make the render go from low quality to high quality. Now, over on the right-hand side, we have six different light buttons. So using these buttons, we can add different forms of lighting to light up our area. Now, lighting is extremely important to get that good render. It can really be the difference between a bad render and a good render. Now you can see it says, click here to start the interactive render. So I'm just gonna click on the screen and you can see that our interactive render has now started. So as you remember earlier on when I said about this, this function here, the interactive render, we can move our 3D viewport and you can see it's constantly updating over in the render window. Now while we've got the interactive render running, it's gonna be quite strenuous on the computer. It's gonna take a lot of power to continuously run this. So unless you're actively making changes, which we are gonna be shortly, I would recommend that we stop the render for now. So now I'm gonna go through all of each of the different settings that we can change to make this image look a lot better than it currently does. So I'm gonna start off with the image slash video properties. So straight away, you can see that this is set to render an image. If we wanted to render an animation or if we wanted to render a 360 turntable, this is where we would change it. And the viewport is set to current view. So this means that what we're looking at over in the 3D window is what's gonna be rendered. If you have this set to custom views and you don't have any custom views set for it to render, you will get an error message to so make sure that this is set to current view. And next up we have colorway. So if you've created any colorways in the colorway editor, you can render them all, all at one time. However, we don't have any colorways selected for this garment apart from the one it's currently in. So I'm just gonna press current. Image size, now this is gonna be the actual resolution of the image. Now there's lots of presets that you can choose from. You know, it goes up to 1080p. We can also have paper sizes, but I recommend always putting in a custom size. And when I render, I don't render anything less than usually 2,500 pixels. Um, but I do tend to go up to sort of like 3,500 to get a nice 4K image. And I also always render in a square format just because it's easier to post on social media that way. And you can also click to maintain the ratio if needed. And next up, we are on the 
background. So this is where we're going to set the scene. So rendering in Core 3D, you're pretty much always going to be rendering in like a photography studio style setting. And this is where we're going to make those adjustments to the, the photography screen now. So as you can see, it's currently set to red, which I'm not a big fan of. So I'm going to change this to a bit more my style, which I do like to sort of render in sort of greys and blacks. So I'm going to pick a nice grey colour to go with. And then next up we have the texture. So if we click this little icon here, we open up all of the different preset textures that are in the software. Now what this does is it essentially applies like a layer over the background to give the environment some shadow and sort of break up that solid color. Now I tend to only stick to the gradation ones. I don't tend to use the vignette ones. So in this one, I'm gonna pick the diagonal two. I'm gonna click open. And then you can also set this to transparency as well. So if you didn't want a background or anything like that, you can set this to transparency and it will just render the avatar. Now this here is where you are gonna be saving this image to once it's completed. I just leave this in the default folder, which is the Claw Assets folder. If you don't know where this is, you can press this icon here and it'll take you there. I would recommend pinning this Assets folder somewhere. Like for example, you can see I've got mine pinned here. As you use this Assets folder a lot when working in Claw, so it's good to have easy access to it. And the image format too, I always just keep this on PNG, but you can change to JPEG if you like. And then next up, we're gonna be looking at the camera settings. Now I don't tend to mess with the camera settings too much, However, there is quite a lot that we can change within these settings. So to look at these changes, I'm gonna, first off, I'm gonna start the interactive render so that we can see these changes being updated in real time. Now you can see here, we can change the lens from a default lens to a panoramic lens. And we can also change the field of view as well. Now we can also change all of these settings here uh, in the view orientation. However, I don't necessarily think it's that important to change these settings as we can just change the camera angle over in the 3D window and you can see that these settings are essentially just changing where the, the position of the camera is. Now you can also select this box at the bottom here to turn on the physical camera settings. And then this lets you change things such as exposure, depth of field, and also different camera effects too. So we can, for example, turn on depth of field and we can select our focus distance. So if we wanted to, we could click focus by left click, turn this on and we can then select where we want to focus our camera. And we can also turn on the camera effects for things like vertical and horizontal tilt as well. So next up, we've got the light properties. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, lighting is probably the most important thing when getting a realistic render in this program or any program for that matter. And as you remember from earlier on, I said, these are all of the light settings. If we select these lights, we can add them to the scene. As you can see, they're loading in the 3D window and we just have to do things like change the angle. You can see the direction of the light is coming this way. And if we click on each light, we get these different light settings over here in the property editor. So we can change the intensity, color, and the size of the light. However, creating custom lighting for rendering can be quite difficult, especially when you're just starting out. It's quite hard to know where the lights should be for the most complementary lighting. So a great thing about Claw is that there are actually lots of different light presets that we can choose from. In this drop down list here in the preset, we can select all of these different lighting. You know, there's quite a lot of different options to choose from. Now, if you select a light and nothing updates, remember we need to be in the interactive render to see our updates go live. So as you can see, this lighting is now completely different. One thing we can also change is the dome light. So the dome light is essentially the, you know, the light that lights the entire area. So when you're using these light presets, the majority of them use a modified version of the dome light. So if we were to turn this dome light off, you can see that the entire lighting has gone from this scene. We can also play with the light intensity. So if we want it a bit brighter, we can increase the light intensity. And we can also change the angle too. Now I'm gonna turn on the ground shadow now because it's a lot easier to showcase these next few settings with the shadows on, on the ground. So to turn on the ground shadow, we just press this button here, which is the show render icon. Now I would recommend turning on the ground shadow for every render that you do. It just makes them look a lot more realistic. And it, you know, it makes it look like they're not just floating in, on a core. It makes it look like they're actually stood on um, a photography backdrop. Now, like I mentioned earlier on, we can change the light angle, which is now much more easily showcased by the shadow on the ground. And we can also lock the lighting to the camera. 
So as you can see, for example, the light is actually coming from this direction as the shadows are cast over here. However, if we change our avatar, the lighting is actually locked to them. So the lighting is now in front of us. As you can see, the shadows are pointed towards this way. So if we lock the lighting to the camera, once we turn our person, you can see the light stays in the same place. Now, last but not least, we're gonna go over the render properties section. Now, these are just the last few tweaks we need to make to make sure we get the best out of our render. Now, if you're working on a Windows computer, the chances are you have an option here that says GPU. If you're working on a Mac, you will only have an option for CPU. Now, if you've got the option to, you definitely wanna be rendering on your GPU, which is your computer's graphics card because that is what the graphics card is made for. It's made for processing images. If you select your render engine as the GPU, you won't get any better images. It will just render a lot quicker. Now, one of the issues that you will face rendering within Claw 3D is that they take a long time compared to other softwares. So an image like this in Claw 3D will probably take around five minutes to fully render. However, if we had this exact same scene in Blender, not only am I gonna get a more realistic result, it's gonna take probably only about 30 seconds to render the, the image. Coming down to the noise threshold. So I've got this set to the lowest possible setting, which is 0 0.001. Now noise is essentially a very fine grain slash pixelation over the image. Now you'll see if I move my camera, you'll see that, that our person becomes very, very pixelated. Now over time, the pixelation is gonna get less and less and less as the render goes on, and that is the noise threshold. Now, if I had my noise threshold at the maximum, which is 0 0.1, it's not gonna work harder to get rid of that noise, if that makes sense. So for the most realistic and clear result, we always want it on the lowest possible amount. Now, the max render time, this can go all the way up to 100 minutes. Now, this is the maximum amount of time that the computer will let this render run for. Now, there's, there's only a certain amount of time that you can let this run for before you hit a, a plateau, you know, it's only gonna get so good. If you let it run for 100 minutes, it's not gonna be any better than if you let it run for 30 minutes, for example. Now, the computer knows when the render is done, it's not gonna continuously run it, even though it's finished. So you could set this as a fairly high value, and you know, even if it's only gonna take 30 minutes to render, it will still stop at 30 minutes, it's not gonna carry on. However, in my opinion, if you've got a fairly decent computer, anything over sort of 10 to 15 minutes is overkill. So I set mine to, you know, anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes. And if it's finished before then, great. If it's not, it's probably not gonna get any better after that anyway. So next up, we've got the quality settings. So that by default, these are both set to medium. So we've got light and material quality. These of course, I'm gonna be put on very high. And that's pretty much it for the settings that we need to change. And one thing I will mention before I end the video is that sometimes the interactive render um, can get stuck at certain points. So if you make a change in any of these settings, for example, if we changed the light from, you know, say if we were on number seven and we wanted to change it to number three and you didn't notice anything changed over here, sometimes all we need to do to get the interactive render to sort of kickstart and start making changes again is just to press stop render here and then press the interactive render again just to give it a chance to refresh so once you're happy with all of the settings and you're happy with how everything looks in this preview window here the interactive render we're now ready to start the render so at the moment this the, the play button to start the render is, is you know you can't press it and that the reason for that is because the interactive render is active so to stop that we just press the stop render button now, once everything stopped, you can see we now have the opportunity to press the final render button. And once we press that, it's gonna go through and sort of kickstart everything. And you can see now over here, we now have a timer started and we get all of these, these different things sort of happening in the bottom corner. So right here, this is our elapsed timer. So this here is gonna be our timer for this setting here that we set the max render time of 10 minutes. And we also have a percentage here, and this is the how much the image is completed. So we're currently at 3%. So now all you need to do is just let this run through all the way up to 100%, and then we have our final image. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention when we were talking about changing the render engine from CPU to GPU is to make sure that your computer knows which graphics card Claw wants to render from. 
Now this is only applicable for people with NVIDIA graphics cards. However, every computer with a separate graphics card technically has two graphics cards. It has the separate graphics card, the powerful one, for example, your NVIDIA graphics card, and it also has an integrated graphics card in the CPU. Now, if Claw3D isn't told to use the powerful graphics card, it's not going to. So we need to make sure we update our settings in the NVIDIA control panel to make sure that Claw knows this. So we're going to open up the NVIDIA control panel and we're going to come down here to manage 3D settings. And you can see here that underneath the preferred graphics processor, I've got mine set to high performance NVIDIA processor. Now, if this is set to integrated graphics, Claw will not be taking advantage of the high performance NVIDIA graphics card that you have installed. So make sure this is set to high performance NVIDIA processor. And we can also come over here to program settings and we can select a program to customize. So we can find Claw Virtual Fashion Inc. We can click here and we've got this set to use global setting, which is the high performance NVIDIA processor, or we can just select high performance NVIDIA processor. That's it for this video. I hope you found this video useful. I hope that you're now set to be able to make some really good images within Claw 3D. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, there is a lot more to creating high quality renders over just the settings. There's a, there's a lot of things that we need to take into consideration, such as lighting, the scene, the avatar, and also the garments as well, making sure we've got our garments set to the most realistic possible settings. And in the past, I've made a video, it should be on the screen now, showcasing all of these different settings to get the maximum out of rendering within Claw 3D. So I would highly recommend that you go watch that video now afterwards so you can look at everything else in the software that you need to make sure we're getting these super high quality renders. If you've got any questions, just let me know in the comments below, but thank you very much for watching.